We welcome Angela Greco with her lecture on grazing in the surrounding evidence of local pastoralism in Utri Girso. Thank you, Angela, for being with us. And uh, please, I leave you the uh, stage, the floor. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I start. Okay. No. Okay. Often, when we talk about pastoralism in the ancient Near East, we think to areas far from the Lugum or to the interaction between sedentary, nomad, or semi nomad population as it emerged from the Mari archive of the Middle Bronze Age. Even when referring to the early Mesopotamian, um, uh, from, even when referring to the early Bronze Age, most discussion on the topic draw attention to northern Mesopotamia or to, uh, or to the elusive eastern areas or to specific ethnic groups, such as the Martu, the Amorians. Nevertheless, Herding relied on a, on a long local tradition in southern Mesopotamia, where pastoralism was not confined to the outskirts of the economic landscape, but it was rather nested in it. This is not surprising if you consider that Herding had played a crucial role in the ancient lower Mesopotamian economy. Indeed, part of, um, apart from their potential in meat, hides, and dairy products, cattle supported agricultural activities and sheep flocks were a source of fiber for the textile industry. And we should consider that textile were principally made of wool in ancient Mesopotamia. Archaic texts from Uruk already refer to production, storage, and, distribu and distribution of wool, and probably also exportation. This implied that sheep and animal husbandry were already well incorporated into the earliest estate administrative system. Moreover, as for herding, bioarchological data from the same period link herding to agricultural settlement. Archaic texts um, still in the um, early Bronze Age Mesopotamia, pastoralism had mostly the shape of local herding, implying that the movement of the herds was limited to approximately 25 kilometers from settlement. Specialized mobile pastoralism did exist, but its impact was not as previously thought. Indeed, it's implausible that mobile pastoralism increased only later during the second millennium BC. And it was like favored by the abandonment mm -hmm. of permanent settlement in North mm -hmm. Mesopotamia in connection with the drop event. Several written records from the so-called free period confirm this picture of pastoralism in the Lugium during the last century of the third millennium BC. In fact, Urfri texts suggest that local pastoralists were highly integrated into the economic, social, and political system, and herds were mostly kept close to settlement for periodic inventories and wall plucking. Sheep and other animals also reached the alluvium from the eastern region along the Zagros mountains as tribute or as booty from military expedition to the land of the Martu. How pastoralism was organized in those border areas is unclear. Nevertheless, as stressed by Walter Salaberger, Independent pastoral groups, whether mobile or not, did not play any significant role in the Ufri economy. Relevant pasture areas were therefore principally, uh, principally uh, circumscribed within or in the close surroundings of the enterprise landscape, and specifically in fields and step areas. We should consider that there were extensive areas in the alluvium between river and canals not reached by any water. Leaving aside marsh areas, River and canals were generally lined by river and thickets or farm zones, followed by arable lands, uh, and then by a strip of land with marginal fields gradually degrading into dry sap, often without any sharp border. Although they don't, did not present any agricultural potential, steppe areas could be optimal for sheep and goat breeding, thanks to the presence of the grass which grew in winter and spring after the rain. The steppe was also the habitat of wild animals, such as uh, onager and gazelles, since what was optimal for domesticated animals was also optimal for feral ones. In fact, shepherds and land hunters basically coexisted in the same areas, from the steppe to the agricultural plots, where the bodies of water could be an attractive for any kind of animals. Indeed, we should consider that apart from the main concept, which was clearly the yield of the crops, the agricultural landscape offered a generous scenario for many additional activities and related professionals. These were fishermen who could catch fish from rivers, canals, and ponds, hunters who could catch fowl and other small or large prey, 
with a double convenience of exploiting the fauna and protecting the flora, but also Schaeffer, whose activities, however, on the cultivated plots had to be regulated. And in fact, the excess of herd to, farm, to farmlands for grazing had to observe specific conditions in order to preserve the crops. And these conditions were the turning of the plots into fallow lands or the end of the harvest activities. Fallow land represented an optimization of the agricultural cycle of the plots, as it was essential to restore and improve soil fertility, especially on alluvial soils that are particularly prone to salinization. However, cattle and sheep were also allowed in land with young barley plants, a kind of practice which presented the double convenience of feeding animals and, preventi and preventing the lodging of the crops. Moreover, the end of the harvest activities in late spring corresponded to the end of the abundance of grass in step areas. Therefore, the access of air to cultivated areas optimized both the economic use of the fields and the management of the herds. It is interesting to note that the regulation of sheep grazing in farmlands is the concern of two paragraphs of the later code uh, of Amurabi, suggesting it was quite a common practice in the ancient Near East. The fifth paragraph considered the possibility, the possibility of, private, of private agreements between shepherds and owners of the field and focuses on the lack of permission. The second one concerns the right of shepherds to access to common irrigated areas and focus on their own timing. Therefore, both paragraphs uh, focus on the abuse of this practice, which were otherwise accepted. One can infer that uh, these practices were common and accepted also in the early periods, and in this regard, we should take into account the land tenure system of the time. In the Ulfri period, uh, the agricultural landscape was administratively subdivided into domain land directly managed by institutional households, the vast majority, according to Giovanni Pettinato, about the 8% of all the arable lands. Then subsistence plots allotted to professional return of their service. And these plots were given in usufruct, although in some cases they could become de facto part of private households. Finally, leased out plots. That is, plots administratively owned by the institution, but temporarily rented by private individuals. In these cases, the right to use rented field for grazing was included in the irrigation tax the tenants had to pay to the institution which owned the plots. Interesting data on pasture areas in farmlands in the Urfri period come from Girsu, located on the southeastern edge of the Lumium. Girsu was likely the widest and richest province uh, of the Urfri state. Its arable lands are estimated at three or 5,000 square kilometers. Its territory was subdivided into three main districts. Girsu, seat of the provincial capital, Guining in Shedu, where the major center of Nigin and Lagash lay, and Guaba, the district facing the Gulf, which however is still undiscovered. The administration of the province was entrusted to local government until the middle of the reign of the first rural, uh, rural of the dynasty, Amarsuena. After that date, the governorship was entrusted to official directly appointed by the crown. The last of these was Urdunan, who bore the title of Sukalmak, Grand Vizier, and was related to the crown family. Although the crown had access to the provincial domain land already before his governorship, Urdunanna enacted a policy by which large areas were taken away from the provincial domain to be distributed as subsistence plots to royal dependents. Moreover, the royal family held herds in the Girsu province and the relative bull was directed to the state capital Ur, where it was further manufactured. State herds at Girsu are estimated at around 75,000 sheep. Moreover, the province also hosted an important textile industry, and specifically two weaving mills, one in Girsu and the other one, the largest, in Guaba. For Gru from Guaba, textile were then exported to Magan and other destinations in the Gulf. We should consider that written documents of the Girsu province mostly come from Tello, the modern name of the ancient city of Girsu, the provincial capital city. Texts recovered at this site, about 30,000, have been recognized as being part of the provincial archive. Fortunately, since the Girsu province was considered as a unit by the central administration of the state, they also provide information on the other district. 
As for herring, important document coming from this provincial archive are the so-called Sheffer texts. Indeed, in an important study on the topic, Daniel Schnell has defined as Sheffer texts, a group of texts recording the yearly account of the Sheffer who manage state health sheep. These texts contain the following section, a list of the different kinds of sheep delivered, which therefore from the point of view of the provincial administration, they uh, could be considered as present sheep, Uba, a list of the sheep expanded, a list of the sheep dead and gathered on the grazing plot, a list of the sheep considered as shortfall, then the totaling of sheep in the uh, aforementioned section. Finally, a subscript report the name of the responsible shepherd, sometimes his supervisor, the relevant district, and the year formula. Hence, the only information this text provides on the relevant grazing area is a generic mention of the district or the center in the case of Kinunir or Nigin, both important center of the Guinigin Shadow district. However, this kind of information could hint at the areas where the hairs have, grade, uh, have grades in a year, suggesting, therefore, that the movement of the hairs were circumscribed within the district border. It's interesting to know that in some cases, these ship inventories were subscribed by individuals who were not professional, uh, professional shepherds, but acted as such toward the provincial administration. Among these professionals, two texts report the uh, land hunters who, as we have seen, coexisted in the same areas with Sheffer, the T's step of the agricultural landscape. Unfortunately, uh, texts do not provide information on the exploitation of the step as grazing areas. Conversely, significant uh, information on pasture area and farmlands come from documents reflecting the perspective of land management. Text recording land surveys focus on the yield productivity of the field, and thus they could report in negative terms the presence of fallow land or plots where sheep and goats graze barley. Indeed, in this text, one can find mention of empty plots, empty plots with sheep, or even the notation of barley for sheep. A more specific insight is offered by another type of documents, which could be defined as pasture text. They were clearly drafted from the point of view of the provincial land management and relate to the portion of fields allocated to professional shepherds as grazing areas. For example, the colophon of the present text specifies fleet field plots taken over by shepherds after, after a list of the plots taken over by shepherds quoted by name and differentiated by category. That is, shepherds of local sheep, shepherds of goats, and shepherds of fed, of fed tail sheep. sheep. The specific expression Ashadaba uh, plots taken over also occur in a tag for tablet container, which informs us that the container where it was applied hosted text concerning field plots taken over by shepherd of local sheep, field plots taken over by shepherd of fat tail sheep, uh, fields of the personnel of the weaving mill, and royal field expanded in the household of Nash. The same expression is probably to be reconstructed in a further text which record the total stock of the field plots taken over by Sheffer in Guaba. This text lists portions of plots located in a different fields of the district, which could be understood as the grazing areas taken over by local unnamed Sheffer. A more detailed insight is offered by M1242, made up of a fragmentary tablet and envelope and recording the allocation of plots to different shepherds of the province. The first section of the text, that is the starting capital, basically distinguishes area subsistence plots, area leased out plots, and area located in temple houses, that is plots from the domain land directly managed by the institution. Due to the condition of the document, we cannot follow this division in the expanded section, that is the allocation of plots to shepherd. Yet, we can infer that expenditure of the plots follow the same threefold day division as the starting capital. Indeed, at the end of a still readable subsection concerning the plot allocated to a least free Sheffer, one can find the expression plots taken over by Sheffer and that are leased out. Further information provided by this text concern field yielding rent and field not yielding rent, therefore offering a further hint at the presence of tenants among the individuals who profited from institutional pasture areas. 
And we went to 42 also showed that the pass to area assigned to chef may vary as far as both sides and managerial features are concerned. Indeed, we can note chef are responsible for plot assigned to themselves, while other chef occur are responsible for plot assigned to themselves and their assistants, or still other chef are responsible for plots assigned to themselves, to the assistant and additional plots classified according to the rent capacity or even shuffled responsible for the plot assigned to themselves and those classified according to the rent capacity. As for the size of the plot, it may vary from 186 to 5 equal. Such an inconsistency is also reflected in the benefits and consequent duties the shuffers have. Indeed, this data can be compared with the proportional amount of floor delivered by shuffers who benefited from subsistence plots. The floor amounts they had to deliver vary from 360 to 60 liters. This implied that also the social position of the chef could widely vary. A last interesting information from MVN 242 concerned the quality of the plots. In fact, the starting capital ends with a total of the plots to be divided in land no further specified, more than 300 decus, land of bad quality, watered land, which could recall the common irrigated area of the Codex of Amurabi, land of medium quality, for a total of about 21 square kilometers to be compared with all provincial arable land estimated at three or 5,000 square kilometers. Lastly, uh, there is a very informative group of texts concerning pasture area and farmlands. In an article appearing in the Seed and Life Journal in 2021, I've gathered a group of 29 texts concerning this topic, which could belong to a same archive. I use the term archive to denote uh, a group of tablets responding to a single administrative question drawn up by a single office, hence very likely physically kept in the same place for the sake of convenience. Texts from this archive are accounts recording the number of sheep which are grazed in a given field within a given year and mention the individual who were responsible for or were somehow connected to them. These texts do not present any total section betraying that the main focus was on the individual entitled to profit, to profit from a given field in a given year. All the tablets were already been published, yet the information was dispersed among the thousands of free documents. A crucial element for the sorting of the tablets was the shape, and indeed 18 tablets present a lenticular shape. The remaining 11 have been selected for their context, since I've not found any information on the shape. However, some of them could have a squared shape, as for example, text 21, which presents an inscription on the left edge, which is incompatible with the round format. And in all these processes, uh, the databases such as BDTNS and CDLI gave a substantial help. As for the location of the fields, we can note that the pasture area, considering this archive, were mostly located in the Guiniginshed um, and Guaba districts. However, only 24 out of 29 tablets preserve data on the location. In a, at least six cases, the fields or the mentioned individuals cannot be ascribed to any specific district. A very interesting aspect is that at least eight fields are named after a village or small uh, rural settlement, while text 29 explicitly refer to town, presumably rural towns, as the place where sheep corpses, uh, corpses have been collected before reaching the grazing area. For multiple reasons, the text from this archive resembles that of the corpus known as uh, Runde Tafel by a definition of Petinato, which are provincial land surveys focusing on yield projection. Both groups share indeed some suggestive features. They really cover the same time span, 42 years, uh, the, 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 the Runde Tafel, and 37 years, the, the, the text from the archive of pasture plots. Uh, they are both concerned with the provincial land management, and as for the shape, many, but not all, uh, the Runde Tafel have a lenticular form, like the text from this archive. They differ uh, in the underlying purpose, control of the yield um, against control of the pasture areas, and the way the information was gathered. Indeed, the Runde Tafel report direct information taken outdoors and eventually compiled uh, indoors. 
Um, Passport text consists instead of summarizing tablets, reporting information gathered by different documents, and therefore they have been likely completed, compi compiled indoors. And then that we are dealing with secondary information is made clear by the note to in B, the relevant tablets are two, and even more explicit, albeit by default, uh, this account was not compiled in reference to the ship managed by a Sheffer, and therefore referring to a Sheffer text. Indeed, text from this archive um, convey information from pasture tax, Sheffer tax, in addition to information from Sheffer inspection, since referring to people involved in herding, information from specific administrative units or about high ranking individuals who somehow benefited from the plots. Of course, not necessarily every single tax combined all this information since it was not relevant for every single pasture area. The information from Sheffer text is clearly evident in connection to the ship assigned to institutional Sheffer or better Erdman. In his work, Daniel Schnell used the word Sheffer, which is the common translation of the Sumerian word Sipa, graphically made up of the sign Pa, which stands for Ugula, overseer, and the, um, overseer, and the sign Lu, which stands for Uru, ship. Yet, one should note that the account Schnell, Schnell described um, as Sheffer text report the activities of individuals defined as Nagada. Nagada is a Sumerian ter term borrowed from Akkadian, conventionally tra um, translated as herdman. The difference between herdsman and shepherd is basically administrative grounds. The term SIPA can indeed be understood as a generic label, while the title Nagada refers to a specific um, administrative level in herding and indeed relates to various types of shepherd, including the cattle keepers. In this archive, the account section assigned to Nagada, explicitly defined as such, concerned the management of sheep and goats in terms of liability, that is present, expanded, shortfall, dead, or literal gathered, which clearly record the structure of their single accounts. Here, we can note the form BD, widely used in this archive in place of the DEGA. It's interesting to note that this form stresses the point of view of the field management because the prefix B could stress the location, thus ship corpses gathered there on the field. Basically, Nagada is the title of the usual uh, administrative interlocutors having directly to do with the managing of state held sheep as well as with the provincial institution allocating grazing areas. And indeed, both Shefford and pasture tax refer to Nagada. Differently, we can note that in text from this archive, individual generically labeled as SIPA occur exclusively in connection with sheep belonging to specific administrative units or households. The information on the sheep concern a given number of sheep and goats without any data on their availability. And this, of course, dependent on the information available to the provincial office which drawn up uh, our text. In general, when not considering specific administrative features, Text can use the generic title of shepherds. Otherwise, they refer to Erzman, a specific administrative level of the herding hierarchy. The herding hierarchy was basically made up of chief livestock administrators, official at the top of the herd management, who were responsible for more groups headed by herdsmen, regardless of the type of herds. Except, except for one single case in text one, where a chief livestock administrator or who is responsible for a plot, their absence in, the, the absence in this archive is probably due to the fact that they acted on a higher level than that concerning the single pasture plots, which our text focuses on. In the middle level, there were the herdsmen, that is, the accountants responsible for animals, assistants, and plots, and in fact, herdsmen are the most attested in text from this archive. As it was the case of the plots, also the size of the herds managed by each herdsman may vary. An example of this variation can already be found in the first column of text one, where we can notice the difference between the sheep managed by the herdsman group responsible for more than 1,000 units between sheep and goats, Luutu responsible for 21 sheep, and Urmes, who was responsible for just 15 sheep. The average deduced from this sample is about 400 animals per herdsman. This perfectly agrees with the average estimated in UMA, which is about 400 sheep per chef. 
<laughs> Finally, on the bottom level, there were the chauffeur assistant, defined as Gabus in the case of sheep and goat, and as Gabra in the case of cat and the herd. In many cases, they were de facto the ones who led the flocks. The number of chauffeur assistants in a team led by a herdman may vary, and this is clearly dependent on the size of the herd and plots entrusted to each herdman. The whole account of chauffeur assistants of Guaban shown in this slide may offer an example of the variable sides of the teams. The Erzman in Duga relied on a group of uh, 35 assistants, while Lugalism was supported by only one assistant. Sheffer assistants are apparently absent in this archive, since they could be basically um, be hidden in the section of site to the Erzman. Professionals involved uh, in animal fattening are also attested in this archive. A fattener is explicitly attested in text 21 in connection to a number of sheep for, for which no further information is given and to a further number of sheep that died in a plot under this charge. In this case, the mention of this title is due to the presence of a namesake and thus the presence of, of fatteners can be inferred also elsewhere in this archive. For example, in text 19, where the two individuals responsible for the plots can be identified with provincial fatteners attested elsewhere in the documentation. This archive quotes a further official involved in animal fattening, Luca Alcala. Although our text consistently refer to him as chief administrator, Shabra, he can be identified with the scribe son of Urlama who managed the new ship pen, that is a provincial institution for animal fattening. Kazuya Mekawa <clears throat> noted that sheep kept in the sheep pens for fattening likely pastured in grassland or fallow land in the favorable seasons. Texts from the archive show that the sheep managed by Luca Alcala rely on different shepherds to graze in different fields, all of them located um, in the Guinigish district. Apart from skilled personnel, also additional personnel uh, could be employed in herding. This is clear by the employment of state dependent workers, Eren, who were recruited on a rotational term basis as Corbel Labor, and by the employment of individuals belonging to the category of Dumudaba, literally uh, seized children or conscripted. The difference between Eren and Dumudaba is elusive, since both can be described as citizen and therefore sometimes interpreted as belonging to a same category. Yet, Two texts from this archive, text 7 and text 25, are particularly enlightening on this topic, as they clearly show that Dumudaba contrast with Eren. Therefore, it's impossible that Dumudaba were not recruited from the reservoir of state-dependent workers, but hypothetically directly uh, from a reservoir of population who, for some reason, did not fall in the former category. In any case, it's interesting to note that Dubudaba often occurs in connection to governors of royal lands. Moreover, two texts show a possible hierarchy within the category of Dumudaba, as they attest Dumudaba employed in plots under the responsibility um, of a herdman, or Dumudaba responsible for both plot and sheep. This feature is supported by Sheffer text subscribed by Dumudaba, acting therefore as herdman. Finally, Tax 4 attests to the involvement of Amorians very likely as a generic workforce in herding. Since texts from this archive reflect the perspective of the field management, they do not necessarily mention the worker actually involved in herding, but whatever individual entitled to profit from the past two areas and acting as interlocutors for the tracking of the sheep. Single professional can be understood as beneficiaries or tenants of the plots where the county sheep have grazed, or even as professional occasionally involved in herding as fulfillment of their labor duty. Interesting is the case of the boatman of large sheep at the same text file concerning pastuarians in Guaba. His involvement in a herding for labor duty can be inferred thanks to the involvement of individual defined as Magal, uh, boatman of large sheep, in an account of goats and sheep taken over, alongside Dumudaba and Erzman of Guaba. Both men of large sheep were likely employed in the trade of textile manufacturing in the weaving mill of Guaba and then exported into the Gulf. The employment in herding would thus represent an involvement in a different phase of the same production chain. In some texts of this archive, we can notice the occurrence of more individuals be belonging to a same professional category. 
Hypothetically, field name referring to professional categories as a whole can betray the presence of beneficiaries or subsistence allotments. This could be the case of the builders, Sumerian Shivin, quoted in text 25, 26. As we can see, the field name of text 26, Ashadaluga, or the ship of six builder of Greys, elsewhere is described as being related to builders, Ashadal, Lugal, Shidin, Ene. That we are dealing with beneficiaries of subsistence plots is, however, suggested by the comparison between two texts from the archive. In text 18, the ship of two overseas of builders are entrusted to Shepherd, while in text 26, the ship are directly assigned to them. The difference depended on what kind of information was transmitted to the office which produced the documents, considering that private agreements between the owners of the ship and Sheffer were outside the concern of this archive and in general outside the concern of the provincial administration. Lastly, several individuals are simply quoted by name in this archive. Simply personal name um, may refer to anyone, whether they were individuals involved in herding in low ranking roles or beneficiary, uh, beneficiaries or tenants of the pasture plots. The occurrence of tenants of institutional plots in this uh, text is, however, suggested by the plots which M1242 classifies as a yielding rent. Therefore, why may infer that at least someone of the several untitled individuals listed in text from this archive were tenants. We should note that in this archive, title and title individuals, both skilled and unskilled professional, can be simply listed or be framed in a scene that can suggest an active involvement in a herding. After a section concerning the ship entrusted to a herdman, a section can follow that includes the ship assigned to the individuals in the plot under the charge of that very airman. Such, such sections end, end with the formula in the plot under charge of PN, the airman. This formula corresponds to a similar formula reporting MVN 242, that is, the supervisor of the plot is PN, the airman, and may indeed refer to a physical plot under the supervision of a airman where ship entrusted or belonging to other individual have grades. When this scene does not, does not involve um, herding or fattening personnel, or even purposely hired workers, one can wonder whether the quoted individuals and professionals have been uh, involved in herding while being subject to labor duty. This could be the case of the royal soldier uh, attested in text 24, who apparently occur in a subordinate role to an entitled individual who was likely uh, a royal soldier too. Um, in any case, by interpreting them as actively employed in herding, we should consider that they were contracted for works into the institutional economy or that the royal data of this kind were transmitted to an institutional office. In fact, a striking aspect emerging from this archive is the interaction with the royal sector. As we have seen, tax from Gisso come from the provincial archive and thus give little information on the land and other sets belonging to the royal sector. Part of this little information also derived from this archive, since it, it offered a glimpse into plots located in provincial fields, but directly assigned by the crown to royal dependents. The tag for tablet containers in before suggests that within a temple household, specifically that of Nanshe, plots allocated to institutional shepherds could occur alongside plots defined as royal field expanded, thus allotted to individuals who worked for the royal sector. As a consequence, pasture area falling in those fields should have been a royal concern. Nevertheless, the information about the animals brought there and the individual entitled to graze animal there were transmitted to the office that produced uh, our text. And this probably because the optimization of the farmlands was an institutional concern. The content of the text from this archive can basically be seen as the ending point of the interlocution of different administrative realities, the royal sector, institutional households, or households with a certain status. This is made clear by specific characterization of sheep or professional involved in, in herding or not, such as, for example, the sheep of the high priestess, the, shipper, uh, the shepherd of the sheep of the grand vizier, the herdsman of the queen or the royal barber. 
On the other side, the lack of any characterization for the professional involved in Erding could indicate that they were institutional shepherds and the lack in general of any characterization to professional or untitled individuals could indicate that they were tied to plots of institutional concern or were involved for labor duty in the herding of state held herds. Not worthily, the information on the herd from the royal sector of specific household disregard the availability of the sheep, clearly a kind of information that was not available to the office which produced the documents of this archive. Individuals tied to royal herds or plots are two royal herdsmen, one of them also attesting in bull accounts of the herds of the royal family, Four herdsmen of the Queen, who are attested elsewhere in the documentation in connection with the sheep of the Queen Abisinti, the wife of the King Amarsuena, or that of Anisha, the concubine of Shulgi. One royal scribe, one royal barber, and two royal cooks. All of them, all of them very likely beneficiaries of royal plots. Tornata. The fifth royal cook, Urinkido is attested in several texts from Pudzrich Dagan in connection to the private area of the royal palace. The second cook, Urbau, is attested in some documents from Gisu as a recipient of goods for the preparation of food. It is interesting to note that in the first year of reign of Amarsuena, he is defined as a royal cook, while in later texts he is defined as cook of Bauea, wife of the grand vizier and high priestess of Bau. Besides, this archive shows that the sheep of this cook have been entrusted to the shepherd in Annaka, who 16 uh, years later took care of the sheep of Akumi, the cook of the Grand Vizier. Lastly, one text referred to royal soldier, uh, as already seen, likely involved in herding for labor duties. Professional tie to the household of the high priestess of Bau are also attested in this archive. Mm, where there is specific mention of sheep or shepherd of the high priestess. At the time of, 20, of text 20, the high priestess of Bau was Gemelamma, the wife of the governor Urlamma. Differently, at the time of text 8 and text 28, the high priestess was Bauea, wife of the Grand Vizier. Moreover, our text also mentioned the chief administrator and a scribe of the household of the high priestess in connection to sheep grazing in the same field. The herding personnel of the Grand Vizier is, is attested aside that of the High Priestess of Bau or in other field, while, while individual tied to the Grand Vizier, a man and a cook, are listed in the same field as the royal personnel. And this is not surprising if we consider the relationship between the Grand Vizier and the royal family. Further, there is evidence of professional shepherd tied to cultic personnel or temples, the herdman of a no further specified high priestess, that of the high priestess in Paisir, the herdman of the Mark temple, that of Enki, and that of the of a N priest. Moreover, two texts report the presence of a Lumak priest of Inanna without mention of the responsible shepherds. Finally, two texts report the presence of professional tie to the god Nanna. It is unclear whether the personal um, of Nanna may have been a royal concern in terms of labor duty and allotment of subsistence land. The connection between the royal family and the god Nanna, whose main place to worship was Ur, uh, is well known. <coughs> <coughs> Further, we know that the herds of the temple of Nanna provided a huge amount of wool to be manufactured by Girsu Weaver, thus very likely uh, referring to herds held in Girsu. Now, a last topic to discuss concerns the animals. Animals count in this archive are sheep, udu, and goats, mash, without any information on age and gender. And this entails that in the case of institutional shepherd, the information deriving from the shepherd account was simplified. Sheep could, however, be fat tail, uduka, uh, or mountain sheep, both referring to a same breed. Thus, it can be assumed that when no further specified, local sheep are men. In general, Sorry. In general, the counting of the sheep was contextual uh, to the plucking. As shown by Schaeffer text, exception to this rule existed, and indeed the two texts from this archive refer to sheep counted after the, the plucking. As for the ownership of the animals counted in this archive, we can suppose the sheep and goats entrusted to institutional herdmen belonging to the state, like those entrusted to uh, individuals as fulfillment uh, of their labor duties, while those entrusted to royal herdmen 
department concerned the heirs the royal family held in the Girsu province, like probably uh, those entrusted to individuals tied to the royal sector as a fulfillment of their labor duties. The ship of the high priestess of Bau may have been private property disguised as institutional property, as well as those of the Grand Vizier. Individual and professional who can hypothetically be understood as beneficiary or tenants of the plots may have been the owner of the ship assigned to them. Lastly, a case of explicit private ownership can be found in text 29, which specified that a certain number of ship entrusted to a herdman had been previously bestowed by um, an individual entering the four into state-held herds. At the end, if the ownership of the plots could be a sleepy matter, ship can be a representative of the private property held by ancient inhabitants of the Luvium, otherwise almost unnoticed, uh, unnoticed uh, indexant institutional documentation from the early Bronze Age. And it is, is, it is interesting to note how private royal state held ship have commonly grazed in the surroundings within the border of the provincial district according to a practice well embedded in the agricultural agenda. Thanks. Thanks for your attention.